Welcome to Jets Game Day presented by Audi. First off, first off, I'm going to talk about defense at seven sacks today. Yeah. A-Rod, 27-35, 281, two touches, three carries, 18 yards. I think when you guys all watch this tape tomorrow, guys, that thing is going to scream in all three phases. Guys, our style of play, really proud to be this freaking coach, uh, this team's coach, guys. You guys are freaking awesome all the way across the board, man. Love y'all. Enjoy this weekend. Get your minds right back for Monday. Hey, remember that that, that Jets oh, logo carries with us this weekend, man. Be safe, be smart. Let's have fun. Get your body back right. Let's keep this keep this on now. Family on three, one, two, three. That certainly was a joyous Jets locker room. A 24 to three thump into the New England Patriots on Thursday night. Welcome into Jets game day, Eric Allen, alongside Quincy Anunwa. When I think of what we just witnessed a couple days ago. A complete effort. Oh, yeah, a complete effort, a complete dominant effort, right? Because these guys showed up from the beginning of the game to the end of the game. Offensively, they were firing on all cylinders. The run game was going well. The pass game was going well. And we didn't see Aaron Rodgers take too many far throws, but we didn't need to. He was picking apart that defense with shallow throws, making it easy on himself. Defensively, so much pressure. The defensive line was getting back there. Seven sacks, just amazing effort. The Jets wanted to start fast, and they certainly did that. And they played with a two-score lead, and then the defense teed off on the Patriots quarterbacks. You're talking about the pressure, seven sacks and all. Yeah, exactly. Two-score leads allow you to tee off on the quarterback, right? We've been waiting to see that. We've been waiting to see for the offense to have that time of possession. 40 minutes of holding the ball in your hands, that's so much better than what we've seen previously, and it allows the defense to go out there and play with their head down because they know that other side has to pass the ball, so now I can go and rush the quarterback. Aaron Rodgers was special, 27 of 35, 281 yards, two touchdowns. Let's get in the film room right now. We're presented by Moody's, starting with Aaron Rodgers going to a guy that he's had chemistry with for a long time, Alan Lazard. Absolutely. In this game, we saw a lot of that chemistry. This one, we're just getting to see Alan Lazard play Alan Lazard football, what we've been waiting to see. So what we're going to see here is a drive route from Alan Lazard. And a lot of times what we want to see most of the time is this guy right here. That's our number one winning. And he won on this play, but we didn't have to go to him because Alan Lazard was screaming wide open across the field. But just watch him up top as we get to Alan Lazard. A nice route from him with their number one corner. He finds a way to get open and gives them enough space. Then we've got here Alan Lazard wide open. And you got to give it to him when he has that much space for him. And, and look at this, yards after catch. That's what we want to see from this guy. We want to see him be dynamic, show other parts of your game, and he's really showing that this year. Uh, he looked like a Quincy Anunua. Yeah, it looked like a flashback right there with the yards after the catch. Listen, the touchdown was also yards after catch, so I'm really proud of him because, again, we wanted to see some things from him, and he's doing a great job this year. How about Mike Williams? He gets more and more incorporated into the offense each week. Yeah, I mean, he's coming along slowly, but 2-1 and one now, and we haven't even really seen Mike Williams explode. So on this play, I'm going to show you the Mike Williams side, and then I want to show you the communication in the back end from the, from the offensive line. So it's a great job by him to run this slant route, but then to reset his stem and then run the slant. A lot of times guys will break right here and it gives the DB an opportunity to break. But he does a good job resetting his stem and then that stick at the top gives him just enough separation to get that first down. Now on this backside here, we always talk about big on big, right? So you want all of your big guys, all of your big guys right here to have these big guys. We don't want our running back blocking defensive linemen. So it's a great job of communication, right? Even with the motion, you're seeing guys move around. Our linebacker is right here, and that's who we want Brees Hall to, to, to block. Watch how they make a hole for him, and boom. Great communication, give you just enough time, Aaron Rodgers, to make that completion. All right, great transition, because not only is Brees Hall a well on blocker, but he's continuing to get it done on the ground. Yeah, man, every week he's doing a great job. I love his footwork. He does a great job of finding a way to make a play for this offense. So on this play here in this backside, I want to show you, again, a great job from this offensive line with their double teams. I was talking before with San Francisco. They did a great job of climbing to the second level. We're going to see AVT do a good job of slamming this guy, getting to the second level, and again here, Second level. It's a mm. great job of getting to that second level, so that way you make some space. Look at that hole right there, right? You might see some Jets bodies in there, but you don't see any Patriots bodies in there. 
and then the footwork from Brees Hall. So what I like to say here is he goes vertical, horizontally, and then vertical, I mean, excuse me, parallel, horizontally, and parallel, vertically, boom, boom, and then the spin move, right? So it's so quick, but not many guys can make those type of moves. I love what the Jets have going in the offensive backfield right now, the killer bees, Brees Hall and Braylon Allen. Coming up, we're gonna put tight end, Tyler Conklin under the Jet spotlight. Brought to you by Moody's, proud partner of the New York Jets. Welcome back to Jets Game Day presented by Audi. A couple of pretty good errands playing right now in New York. That's caught. And you've got a Conklin catch again. He's been their leading receiver tonight. Targeted six times, caught five for 94 yards. You and Ruck both getting involved this week. Not maybe as many targets as you wished in the first two weeks, but really having a part in tonight's win. Yeah, I mean, I think as a group, we just, we control what we can control. We go out there and try to do our best to, you know, help our team be successful, whatever that is, in a run game, pass game. And tonight we just happened to get some targets and uh, we're pretty happy about it. <laughs> you led the Jets receiving group with five receptions, 93 yards. Those 93 yards are a career game high for you. What did you like about that connection with Rodgers tonight? Yeah, I mean, a couple of situations, a scramble drill, I was just trying to do my best to, you know, get open for him. And, uh, you know, all I had to do was catch the ball. He made it pretty easy. I mean, no, Rodgers heading into this week really emphasized giving the defense a chance to play with a lead and adding more plays. You guys had 70 plays for 400 total yards on offense. Is this the standard that you guys are expecting every week? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, that was kind of our focus was to come out here and start faster. The first two weeks we didn't start as fast as we would have liked to start. Um, so to be able to come out here and have some of the drives that we had, I mean, it felt like 12, 15 play drives. Uh, so, I mean, now that's definitely the standard. The Jets defense also on the other side of the ball really had themselves a game tonight too. What about that complimentary football did you like? Yeah, I mean, as an offense, that's what we want to do. We want to be able to go out there and, you know, get a lead and have long drives so the defense can get back out there, pin their ears back, and go do what our D-line does and our defense does, and that's disrupt the quarterback and create turnovers. Last one for you. It was really highly talked about, those three games for you guys in 11 days. Now you come out of it 2-1. and one. How important was this win, not only a division rivalry one, but also just to kind of set yourselves up for the rest of the season? Yeah, I mean, you know, being a home opener, divisional game, rivalry game, to get to 2-1, and one, uh, you know, to stack two wins in a row. I mean, just a lot of a lot of big reasons why today was, you know, really important for, for us. So uh, and it feels good to be able to have a little weekend break after that. So Awesome. Appreciate the time, Conk. Appreciate it. Thank you. This exclusive interview was presented by Audi. Visit your tri-state Audi dealer to get behind the wheel of yours today or visit AudiOffers.com for more information. Quincy Tyler Conklin against the Patriots, five catches for 93 yards, including a pair of third down conversions that you're going to take me through right now. Yeah, definitely. And he did a great job. You're tight end. You want him to be the guy that's closest to the line of scrimmage that can make those big plays for you. And he did a great job here. So when you're playing this Patriots defense, you got to understand that they're going to do a lot of things to confuse you. And so look, right now it looks like everybody is manned up, okay? So right now Aaron Rodgers is thinking, okay, this is a man route. And when you see that, especially on this play, this is all go. So most guys are gonna run, he's gonna run down the, down the numbers, the, the seam, the seam, and the numbers down there. But then boom, it changes. Mm. Now it's a zone, and it makes it a lot more challenging to figure out what to do. And when you have Aaron Rodgers back there, the Aaron Rodgers that we're seeing now, the mobile one, now it makes it hard for the defense to stay in their zones. And so you've got your tight end here, finding a way to find, get open for your quarterback. And that's a beautiful job. This is what you like to see, that connection right there. Like, hey, listen, I know it's going to be tough to find this spot right here with this confusing defense, so let me make sure I, get, I find myself a good spot and get my numbers open for you. All right, before we get into this third long on the next play, what are the rules for you when the quarterback starts rolling out? Yeah, so usually it's short guy goes deep, deep guy comes short, making sure you're showing your numbers for your quarterback. It's a great job in zone because it's a little easier in zone because a lot of times those guys miss their zone. Like, hey, this is my spot on the field. I'm very specific to that. So once the quarterback starts getting out, they stay in those spots. And now I just kind of slide over just like that. Savvy job by Conklin. Okay, take us through the third and long here. Yes. Yeah, so now this play here, what I like about this is 
your number one receiver up top, he's getting double. They've got two sets of eyes on him, so he's out of the play. And that's a tough thing, but that's what the Patriots like to do. They don't want your best guy to beat him. So now everybody else has to make sure, okay, listen, it's my time to, sh to make a play. So down here, we've got this corner, we've got this under, and then we got this nice post, seam, whatever you want to call it. And he has a great job of finding that open soft spot right there and showing his numbers again, right? You're tight end over the middle. That's what we like to see from tight ends. Finding your way there, the big body. If somebody wants to knock the ball out, they can't because listen, I'm a big dude down there. And just a great job by him getting open. Right when he gets past this linebacker, he shows his eyes. So we'll show it from this side here just so you guys can get a better angle of it. Again, Aaron Rodgers sees this on the backside. This is a, a, a double and then boom, right here. I get past my guy, watch his eyes. I get past my guy, I'm looking. I'm looking, throwing the ball. Great job, first down. Yeah, great job by Rodgers with his eyes holding the safety over, and then he comes back to the middle. Don't go anywhere, because we're gonna go right back into the victorious New York Jets locker room. You are watching Jets Game Day, presented by Audi. No C.J. Mosley in the lineup, no Jermaine Johnson, no problem for this Jets defense. They held New England to three points, 139 total yards, and they had seven sacks in their first AFC East matchup of the year. Drake May back to throw. May under pressure and gets sacked at the 12-yard line. We head in the right direction it means that uh, everything we did for the last two, three weeks, uh, uh, negative and wrong. We trying to get it fixed, trying to go in the right direction and just build every single day. And today was just a day that we build. We're going to go watch the film, fix everything that we did wrong today and keep building, man. Just keep building so we can become the eventually the number one defense and hit our stride. So we'll put in the work this all season and then got his body right, got his mind right, got his athletic ability right. Um, and he, he's been a freak athlete, man. He's been a dominant edge rusher. So for him to take the initiative this all season, do everything the right way to be able to put a for performance on that he's been putting on is unbelievable and um, it, it's funny because he just hit his stride man the things that he can do is unbelievable man I'm super super excited for his future um, not just this year but the years to come man and I'm super happy to have him on our team so the defensive line every snap pushing back the Patriots offensive line meanwhile heat on May right there and he gets sacked back at the 44 yard line I just, I just got to continue to play that role you know after Jermaine went down you know, I just had to step up, uh, being able to hold um, everybody accountable, uh, even the little ones, and uh, you know, just keep stepping up, keep executing. Jacoby Brissett, who the Jets turned into a bit of a pinata tonight behind a makeshift offensive line. For meanwhile, that line breaking down again, and here come the gangrene guys. You know, we talk about a style of playing the standard, and um, you know, just playing relent with relentless effort, 11 hats to the ball, and I felt like we did that. You know, it's uh, credit to San Fran. I'll, I'll go back to them in terms of the way they uh, they ran it and um, taught us a couple things on the well, well, with regards to the things that we needed to get fixed. And I felt like uh, last week we defended the run very well. Um, I know the quarterback had the scrambles, but uh, and then and then this week uh, felt like uh, against that team, uh, you know, their backs are pretty damn good. I felt like we did a pretty good job today. You know, no matter who's out there, we expect guys to rush the passer at a very high level. Um, and we feel like with our back end, if you if you rush the passer, you're going to get production. You know, it's not easy to go all the way out west and then come out, travel again. Doesn't happen very often. And then to get this short week, I thought uh, I thought our guys did a great job preparing themselves. Like it's like I've said, you know, I, I said it to him a million times. No one really cares about how you get the game day. The expectation is that you perform and. Uh, and I thought our guys attacked the week, uh, the last couple weeks really, to, to make sure they were on top of their bodies and uh, staying physically fit. And the Jets fans, something to go wild about. So the final score here at MetLife Stadium, the Jets 24 and the Patriots three. The green and white have a mini buy and then they return right here at MetLife Stadium to take on the Broncos next Sunday. Not seeing any effort from the Jets defense. Let's get into our great debate. We are presented by HCL Tech. Aaron Rodgers, Quincy, has met expectations through three games. I might not like this answer, but I'm going to have to be honest. I don't think so. I think that he has been just enough, but he hasn't met the expectations of what the Jets want to see. I've seen some plays missed out there, and this isn't saying that Aaron Rodgers has not played 
a great game, right? But I think the expectations of what we wanted with Aaron Rodgers were way up here, right? And right now, I think he's building up to get there. I think if we keep our expectations high, then we're gonna see something amazing. Right now, we're seeing some great football, two and one after three games, but we kind of expected that when we looked at the schedule before the season started. When we saw that, we said, hey, listen, this is gonna be three and one. We're gonna go into that week with a little mini buy, and these guys are gonna be playing well. I wanna see Aaron Rodgers hitting all these deep passes. I wanna see him scrolling out, rolling out of the, the backfield, all those different things that we know Aaron Rodgers does. All right, I want to say that Aaron Rodgers has exceeded expectations. He's completed 67% of his passes for 624 yards. He's got five, tu five touchdowns and one interception. He's 40 years old coming off an Achilles tendon tear. I think a lot of people were counting out number eight. And what we saw Thursday night against the Patriots is the best is yet to come. He is playing like a guy who is 30 years old. And what I loved against the Patriots is that he moved like a guy who was 30 years old because guy throws it better than anybody in the history of this league. No, definitely. I think that, you know, we're seeing so many great glimpses of Aaron Rodgers. But again, <laughs> again, I think Jets fans can can ride with me on this one. We want to see more. We want to see more. Like, I know Aaron Rodgers will probably tell us all relax, but I think that our expectations are up here because we want to see it time and time again. We're slowly seeing it. We're just not seeing him roll out of the pocket. We're just not seeing so many different things. There's so much more we want to see. All right, one thing we can certainly agree on, Aaron Rodgers is off to a good start with the Jets. Even though the Jets don't play this weekend, we're going to get Q's upcoming predictions next. This was presented by the official digital transformation partner of the New York Jets, HCL Tech, supercharging progress. Get 100% verified tickets to every upcoming game at Ticketmaster, the official ticket marketplace of the Jets and the NFL. They're going to get a free play. Rodgers is the man. Under pressure, tripped up, throws it backwards. It's loose on the ground. A scramble for it, and the Jets have it. Touchdown! Brees Hall pulls it in. Freeway five, go line, touchdown! All that matters is that we win. At home in prime time, ready for prime time tonight. Different animal with number eight under center. Welcome back into Jets Game Day, Eric Allen, alongside Quincy Anunwa. It is time for predictions. Are you ready to enter the hot seats? I got to put my crystal ball here, but I think I'm ready. Okay, Quincy, we are presented by New York Lottery. Aaron Rodgers will reach 60,000 career pass yards against the Broncos. He needs 321. So they haven't really given up too many yards in the past game. They play some young quarterbacks, but I think this is the week that he might do it. Okay. Will McDonald will have double-digit sacks by game eight. McDonald has five sacks the last two games. So with, with McDonald, I think that, I'm not saying it's a fluke, I think that eventually teams will start to say, hey, listen, we can't let this guy continue to, to, to wreak havoc on us, so they're going to try to double team him. Somebody else is going to have to pick up the slack. You figure he'd have to slow down. He's on pace for 17 sacks right now. Going back to Rodgers, he will reach 500 touchdown passes this season. He needs 20 more. Yeah, absolutely. He's got so many guys that can catch the ball for him, and he's doing a great job of getting open, so it's going to happen. The Jets and the Buffalo Bills will ultimately separate themselves from the Miami Dolphins and New England Patriots in the AFC East race. Well, the Jets already separated themselves from the Patriots, and the Bills already separated themselves from the Dolphins, so I think it's only inevitable that once they play together, we'll see who the top dog is. Okay, after seven games, the Jets will either have a 6-1 and one or 5-2 and two record. Here are their upcoming opponents. They'll host the Denver Broncos. They'll face the Minnesota Vikings in London. That is a Monday night home game against the Buffalo Bills. Finally, a night game at Pittsburgh. Yeah, so that's not an easy schedule. I think they're going to probably drop one at least. Uh, so they'll be, have five and two. Five and two, that wouldn't be bad. No. I don't think six and one is out of the equation Absolutely either. Absolutely not. I don't think so. Okay, so final thoughts here. The Jets head into the mini buy with a lot of momentum. Two game win streak and a complete performance against the Patriots on Thursday. Yeah, week by week, this team is getting better. I think if they were playing San Francisco this week, it would look completely different from the way it looked in week one. So it's great complimentary football. Looking forward to seeing how they continue to improve. We're seeing Aaron Rodgers expand his game. Defense is expanding their game as well. It's only up from here. All right, awesome job, Quincy. Enjoy your weekend. Jets game day. We'll be back right here next week.